Okay guys, welcome back. We, uh, in all of the rain, we have been doing shop work for the last month. And so the last project we had to do was to work on the new cultivator. This is the one I showed you uh, early last winter. And we have been working on it in pieces. So we got all of the row units lined up on the rows and the bar spliced and uh, we have replaced all of the broken shanks and so now we're moving on to the next phase of the operation which is replacing the teeth uh, and working some more on the depth settings and today I can show you exactly what I was talking about on the tooth setup and the row width and so uh, what we're doing is we're taking off the old teeth there's a shank that I just did and when I have the old tooth off, I clean the shank up with the cut brush and then we're painting it with oil you know, so that they will flow good. And this is the tooth setup. I'm going to try and get down here so you can see what we're talking about. But we're going to use the spike running next to the row on the first rank. And the second rank, we're using the little baby uh, three inch teeth. Uh, on my other cultivator, those teeth run on the first rank and then the rolling furrow wheel runs there. But on this cultivator, we're going to put the spikes right next to the row and in the, the gap, instead of being 12 and a half to 14 inches, we're going to initial, uh, our initial setup or what we've been doing here is we're setting up an 8 inch gap. And then we are going to use the quick depth controller so that we run those spikes that are running right next to the row uh, at an inch or two of depth. Uh, now the way my ridges are built when I'm running that shank at a two inch depth, uh, since I already have four inch ridges, this back shank will be moving dirt. Uh, he will be, you know, considerably deeper. If the front shank is at a one inch depth, then just because of the way the field is built following my planter, uh, he will be running, you know, four or five inches deep and uh, he will be moving dirt. And so he will be the one, that center shank on the back will be the one that's kind of determining the speed of the operation. Uh, this one, since he's running on a different part of the ridge, will probably be running, you know, uh, uh, halfway between whatever this one, if this is running at one, and this is on the very crown of the ridge and you have a four inch ridge, it puts him at five, it'll put that one you know at three or two but I want to show you the spacing here and the method to the madness and the reason we're using these wide row things so there I'm showing you the width that we're gonna start out at yeah uh, this one's set on nine some of them are set on eight I've got to tweak that yet the first thing I did was I indexed all of the shanks to a uniform part on the bar and by doing that uh, then we will be able to move the whole bar itself by taking those couple bolts loose on each row unit there. Uh, you've got bolts. Uh, when I'm measuring these, and, and keep in mind, I, you can see I have not moved that one yet. When I'm measuring these, you just need a uniform point to measure from, which theoretically is the center of the row unit. And then I measure out to the center of the bolt. And so that will give us uh, uniformity that's how I get the uniformity on these it's the quickest easiest way to measure but the first thing I did was I put all of these shanks to that point right there and any further movement I do on those shanks will be on the four bolts that move the whole piece of two inch tubular stock and that will be done in the field so the spacing on the next row of shanks the one that have the three inch little duck foot on them uh, that was the factory setting for the wide row. And if you notice the bars sticking out there, it's right at 20 inches right now. But if you notice the bars sticking out there, I still have an inch and a half of movement on that bar. And so if on both row units, there's the other row unit setting beside it, it's set at 20 right now. And that's what all of my cultivators are set at. And so I still have the option of closing that gap from 20 inches to 17 by moving, by moving those bars. Uh, anyway, a bunch of widths we are going to have to determine in the field, uh, but the objective here 
is going to be to uh, initially, you know, be able to run the cultivator in that uh, four to five and a half mile per hour for a first pass. Uh, when the crop is very small, when it's just emerged, or when you know it's an inch or inch and a half tall, but be able to run the cultivator at speed without the rolling shields. And I'm pretty sure that the limiting factor is not going to be uh, my guidance, you know, how straight I am on the row. My limiting factor is going to be that big sweep on the back. And I may have to tone him down. I'm using those uh, seven inch sweeps now. And I may have to tone that down and go back to that intermediate, you know, uh, five inch sweep or whatever. Uh, I can't remember what the mid size sweep is, but we may have to go back to the mid size sweep on the back. But this year, with the weather being like it is, our planting window is going to be very, very compressed. And uh, because of that, it's going to be necessary. We're going to have to do a lot of cultivating in a little bitty short window rather than the planting, you know, being spread out over a couple, two, three weeks. Uh, I have all the ground worked up. Probably all of the row crop, crop planting is going to have to happen in a very small window, which in turn means that most of the cultivation will happen, have to happen in a very tight window as well. And so. It's going to be necessary to have all the different tools available and probably have a couple tractors cultivating at the same time. So, anyway guys, the rain is continuing and I'm hoping to finish the prototype cultivator today and, you know, maybe by the end of the week we can finally get started planting. Thanks guys.